All praises to the Almighty, sublime, most magical one, the creator of all things, and the master of the day of judgment, our Father. Hallelujah, Father. We love you. And to our most beautiful mother, Marihala, much love, honor, and respect, mother. We adore you, and we ask you for wisdom in this message. Today, we're going to be talking about Libya. And what happened there, that was definitely a judgment. And Libya, part of Libya happens to be the shoulder, the shoulder of Uriel the Archangel. You look at his face, you can see his side profile, his hair. And then you see that dark spot right next to his hair, that is his shoulder. Okay, so we see where the continent of Africa is being reclaimed. Okay, it seems like it's going to start like this. Okay, we have judgments everywhere, but we see in the last week there has been major, major judgments in the motherland. Okay, and so Libya got hit. I don't, I don't even know. It's, the casualties are so high. I'm hearing from 6,000 all the way up to 20,000 people. So uh, the numbers fluctuate. I think some of them are counting the people that are missing as casualties and some of them are not. As I, I, I watched many of the rescue efforts and many of the survivors and their stories. And what I noticed is that I didn't see anyone that looked sub-Saharan African. I didn't see anyone in any of those videos. But for for uh with the dam with with so many so many you know videos on the subject and not to see anyone in this region of Africa that did not look sub-Saharan and knowing what's going on in Tunisia and in Libya, where many of our brothers and sisters perished as they ran them off the land. Many of them are still enslaved in their prisons, and they're trying to run away from it. Looking at this landscape, Looking at the landscape and not seeing any of our people in any area, you know what happened. That is evidence that our people was ran off the land. And believe me, they terrorize our people to take that chance and take that journey to try to get across that Mediterranean. They know they only have a 50% chance of survival, but they take that chance. Pregnant women, children, you know, all ages. And they have been perishing at sea. So they torment the people so horribly in the motherland. They take all their land. They run them off the land. And so now it's time to pay up. The Most High's host has been authorized. <laughs> and they're not holding back. So that dam broke. That was a water judgment. We know who's over the waters. Yeah. By now, we know who's over the waters. That that um, uh, great and mighty God, Poseidon. Yeah, that's in the host of the Most High. And um, the dam broke. Yeah, the dam broke. Because of what they did in Libya. Okay, so I thought that Muammar Gaddafi... You know, they labeled him as a dictator. And so in, in our culture, the way they taught us in school, dictators, you think about Napoleon Bonaparte and all of his cruelty. You know, you think about those kind of people, you know, and Napoleon Bonaparte, his story might be quite different because they have lied so much in their history. OK, so Muammar Gaddafi, he ruled from 1969 to 2011 that's 42 years and the people 
were very happy with him. Muammar Gaddafi was assassinated because he didn't go along with their European uh, program. You know that that professor talks about? Africa, historically, Sub-Saharan Africa has been fundamental to the global prosperity of the advanced countries. Okay, And Africa had a role to play. It has a role as a raw material producer. We will not allow Sub-Saharan Africa to escape that. Okay, we do everything to keep Sub-Saharan Africa where it is, also impoverished. It's absolutely vital for the prosperity of everyone else. So let's get clear about that. Okay, and this means all the economic structures, all the global institutions, and the economics we teach everyone is all designed to keep Africa exactly where it is. And whether it is Europe or US or now China, it's always the same. We need Africa to be impoverished because we need those raw materials and we need them dirt cheap. Okay, so that's the message. It doesn't mean to say that there's nothing Africans can do. Of course there is. Okay? But this is the opposition that they're fighting. This is what it's about. Because if Africa does do something different, I assure you living standards of all those in Europe and North America and Asia is going to fall. Okay, we must keep them impoverished so that we can go in there and take the resources for dirt cheap. We'll see Muammar Gaddafi knew the game. <laughs> <laughs> and he cut away from the game and he gave the wealth back to the people. Uh, the wealth that came from uh, Libya benefited the people. Yeah, so he, he would like zero electricity, zero bill for electricity. Yeah, he gave them uh, allowances like to buy their own houses when he took over. He gave the money to the people. Can you imagine? He said, well, okay, uh, if that happened here, because they did the same thing to us. He was before his time, you see. Muammar Gaddafi was before his time. It wasn't time for the Great Reset yet. So we have the colonizers. This is their program that they keep the sub-Saharans poor. Keep them afflicted so they could just come in and rob the resources. Yeah, for dirt cheap. And that's how everybody else stays rich. So they saw Muammar Gaddafi going against his plan and enriching the people. Making their lives better. And they saw this. And they knew that this could spread like wildfire. They had to put a stop to, the, to him. And so they assassinated him. Yes, we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, I'm, I'm sure it did. So the colonizers came, they saw, and they ordered his death. She said herself it had everything to do with her visit there. You see, the colonizers could not allow what Muammar Gaddafi was doing because they were benefiting. Everyone in the West was benefiting from the resources in the motherland. And in, in Muammar Gaddafi's case, they had to pay him. Yes, and the people were empowered. That's why I said they set us up for poverty because they must keep us in a low vibration to conquer us. And so when we became awakened, when our DNA became awakened and the Most High empowered us, it's nothing they can do to stop this. Okay, so now we have not only the host of the Most High dealing with them, but we also have some of the 144,000 already dealing with them. Too. And we're a part of that. We all are a part of that worldwide, even our small group. All of us are on our mission now, and it's, it's nothing they can do to stop it. Okay, so we have almost 20,000 people perishing in Libya. I wonder why. I wonder why people say this couldn't be God. This is too cruel for him to take out so many people and children and babies and mothers. And, you know, no, this is justice because in Libya, because these people have to flee their oppressors. 
They have to flee the poverty. They have to flee the enslavement of their oppressors. And they go and they try to leave on that Mediterranean Sea. A lot of them don't make it. They make sure of it. And just like with Abel's blood, the blood is crying out from the grounds. The blood is crying out from the seas. The blood is crying out. You know, we were all told these days were coming. And and in the Minor Prophets, it spells out the Most High avenging and revenging and balancing the scales with everyone that came against his children. Now, I'm not the master of the Day of Judgment. I'm not the master of the Day of Judgment. So, yeah, I see all of these people in sorrow. I see, you know, parents that lost their children, people that lost their whole family. Don't get me wrong. I see that. But I also know that this, these are judgments and the most high God of Israel is the master of the day of judgment. And I praise him for whatever he is doing right now, because I know it was all in his plan. When we were going through all of the atrocities. Uh, Their whole setup of keeping us in poverty. Their whole setup in keeping us in captivity. All of the brutality. You know, after they took everything away from us. Set us up for failure. And we're just crying and crying and having our little uh, picket lines. You know, that's what they used to call protest picket lines. You know, and crying to serpent seed to change. Their systems of oppression, begging and begging and crying and crying. Well, nobody wanted to listen to us because they benefited from it. The professor told us that. We have to keep this going. That's not just Africa. That's in the USA too. Look at the wealth gap. Anyway, let's go back to this judgment. Yeah, because I could just keep on going and going on that subject. But we're going to stick to what's happening here. Okay, so Muammar Gaddafi, whom they called a dictator, was very good to his people. Yeah, he had the, the wealth uh, in his hands. And, and he, gave, he, he decided as the president that the people should be blessed by their own wealth. And the colonizers peeped it out and saw what he was doing. And they knew that would spread like a virus. And they never wanted the people to have the power, you see. And so, they ordered his assassination. Yes, we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, I'm, I'm sure it did. And the way that they killed him was so, so very cruel. You know, I went to look at the images of his death. If you want to go or just click on Google uh, Muammar Gaddafi's death, they do have photos, but they have restrictions on them for you to even view the photos. Yeah, really, really bad, really cruel because he had to be an example. What he was doing, they didn't want that to spread like a virus. That's why they're trying to stop what's happening in Niger. They're stop. They're trying to stop what's happening in Niger. We, we're going to get to that in a minute. You know, what made me realize that, you know, my opinion of Muammar Gaddafi, you know, that he was a dictator because when they assign magical words to people, you know, when they do what they did, to him, it justifies it. Yeah, so, you know, Hillary, she was sitting there all proud. She was sitting there all proud of what she did when they assassinated him. Yeah, she's sitting all proud now. But these days of judgment are going to hit all of the ones guilty of these atrocities. And the only thing that brought me my attention to Muammar Gaddafi and find out who he really was, 
was that uh, the like Malima, President Malima, he spoke about Libya and what happened, you know, and I heard it from several of their leaders said, look what happened to Libya. Look what happened to Libya. Yeah. Because the colonizers ordered his death and they took all of the gold, they took everything. And of course, the social program ceased. Yeah, and they got everything back into the way that it fits their narrative. The narrative that that professor said, to keep the people in poverty. And it's so bad in Libya for our people that they try to run. Yeah. And so for uh, Muammar Gaddafi, you know, I'm looking at those images that I saw of his death. His blood is crying out from the ground, and so are all of the other victims that suffered. Yeah, when the colonizers ordered what they did. Now, what you're looking at right now is magical. This is what's on the shoulder of Uriel. This is in the middle of nowhere. And you see all that Atlantean technology. You might see an angel here and there, still very heavily cloaked, but uncloaked enough. For us to see what's going on here. Now, I told y'all that Mother said that the Atlanteans were gathering the frequency and vibe of this planet. Because everything had to be jizz, right for judgment. And evidently it was after that uh, balloon that was hovering over Hawaii, that last one. Because judgments have been accelerated since then. They have been accelerated, and so the frequency that they're picking up is all of the blood that's crying out from the ground. All the grief of the people that's crying out to the Most High. Yeah, and He's seeing to it. And we give the Most High glory and praise because we know who He is. He's the Master of the Day of Judgment. And he's turning this world upside down. And he's giving people warning. And that's what this message is, a message of warning. This is a very difficult message because I see the sorrow and suffering in that judgment. And I have to say, this is judgment day. You better repent. You better bow the knee. Because if you don't. Yeah, the host of the Most High will not have mercy on you. You will be destroyed. The host of the Most High is real. You know, in a situation like this, in a situation where there's an earthquake where hundreds of people die, where there's fires everywhere. Yeah, the Most High is the master of the day of judgment. And the host have been activated. And no matter how they try to hide history or lie about it, the Most High has the truth of all things reserved. There's no lying there. There's no erasing history in this judgment. None of their magic is working. Okay, I'm going to talk about this one last thing. <clears throat> because we had that judgment to happen at Burning Man. And so I was led to uh, look at a video on Wicker Man. I told you guys they were using magic. We saw the conjuring. We saw the flames coming out of that structure. We, we saw the fire natos dancing right next to people. And it's like they were cast into a spell. Well, when I looked at Wicker Man, it was magic. It was magic. Wicker Man, what the, Wicker Man... The, the uh, Celtic people used to sacrifice people to fire. And they would build a structure like a burning man and fill it with animals and fill it with people. When they were going to a war, because in their belief, they thought that for every person they sacrificed, all of their warriors' lives would be saved. And so they would first they would get the guilty ones, the ones that uh, they had incarcerated for whatever crime they would sacrifice them. Then they would if they didn't feel like that was enough, they would go get innocent people and they would burn them. Yeah. So that was a magical spell. They wanted they want to win the war. Technology. What did we see on his shoulder? 
What did we see on Uriel's shoulder? What did we see? Technology. They are going to lose. They could not even pull off their magical spell. With that one, they're conjuring. They couldn't muster the energy that they needed to pull it off. It's nothing anybody can do to stop these judgments. Worldwide judgments. Let's go over these major judgments. Okay, so I'm going to go back about uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe a few weeks ago. Yeah, with this heat dome, our Messiah set the whole coastline of the Mediterranean on fire. After we went to the courts of the Most High about our brothers and sisters, that are perishing out in the Mediterranean Sea. The frequency of their blood is crying out to the Most High and all of those in grief and in worry and in distress, leaving the motherland to escape the brutality of the oppressor. All of those frequencies are being heard by the Most High. So, in the case of the Mediterranean coastlines, the Messiah set them afire. Then we go to Morocco, which now we recognize as that old dragon's wing. We got hit with an earthquake. And, and similarly, as I looked at the rescue efforts, as I looked to the survivors, I didn't see anyone that looked sub-Saharan African. And we know in Tunisia, that old wicked president, he said it was too black. And, and that's why he abuses the migrants that's trying to get to the Mediterranean Sea. He triggered a lot of judgments. And so when I see these, peop these people of Morocco and I see these people of Libya and I don't see any sub-Saharan people, any, any sub-Saharan survivors, even victims, I know that they've been driven off the land because of the cruelties. And so now the whole right wing of Uriel is showing judgments. Showing judgments. Now let's go to the mighty fist. What's happening on that mighty fist of Uriel the Archangel? That's going to be like casting a pebble into a pond. They did exactly what Gaddafi did. He put the power back into the people's hands. He gave them back their wealth. Where the people could benefit from the wealth of that country. Same thing Muammar Gaddafi did. But you see, they can't stop it. Because the Junta, those brave generals, yeah, that are part of the 144,000. Yeah, star seed working for the Most High without shedding a drop of their brother's blood in the coup d'etat. They put the wealth back into the people's hands, raise the whole vibration of the country, raise the whole vibration of the continent of Africa. And this is unstoppable. That's why it's going to be like Casting a pebble into a pond. Yeah, that's going to spread. So I, I just dealt with the, the right wing judgments of Uriel on this video. I know that judgments are hitting all over this earth. The frequency that the Most High is hearing now is the cries of his children from generations past. 
crying out to him saying, how long, O Yahweh? And he's activating judgment because it's not that much longer. Okay, you guys, that's what I have for you today in judgment news. Keep your vibrations high and keep on your mission. Keep going. Keep going. We are all on a mission. Hallelujah. And our energy is vitally important to what's happening right now. Hallelujah. Our small group of star seed all over the earth. We are already receiving more power. We, we, we are receiving our dunamis power from on, from on high. And we're highly protected. And our energy and our vibration working for the kingdom of love and light is helping to bring on the change, the great reset. Yeah, and for those of you listening in, if you resonate with this message, even though you do not like it, even though you oppose this message, even though you realize that it is truth, your warning is out there. Repent. The days of judgment are here. The Most High is going to make everybody bow the knee. Yeah, but to obtain any bit of mercy from the Most High for what's to come, I would be begging right now. I would be begging for forgiveness. I would repent for my sins and everything. All the hatred I had towards his children. I would be repenting right now. And trying to balance the scale somehow with good deeds. But that's up to you. That's up to you. You got your warning. Okay, you guys. Until the next magical show. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share all of this good news. Doesn't it feel good to fight back? We are so victorious. All praises to the Most High. This is a game changer, Star Seed United. Star Seed United forever, yeah. And thank you for your support of this station and all your gifts of love. May the Most High multiply them for whatever your hearts desire. Times 100, abracadabra. Yeah, okay, you guys, until the next magical show, your big sister, the Hebrew widow, the Hebrew rose, Jericho out. Shalom!